Hey guys, let's talk about Jalik L. Rainwater. Jalik was born on August 2nd, 1995, and he's been missing since November 1st, 2007, from Greenwick, New York. At the time of his disappearance, he was 12 years old, 5 feet 6, and 105 pounds. He's biracial, African American, and Caucasian. He has brown hair and green eyes. He has a slight speech impediment which causes him to pronounce the letter R like a W. His nickname is Jay. At the time of his disappearance, Jalik's hair had blonde highlights and was styled in a two-inch afro. He has several moles on his back. He suffers from severe emotional problems and has violent outbursts as a result. He was exposed to alcohol and cocaine in utero and has been, di and has been diagnosed with reactive attachment disorder, which makes it hard for him to form relationships. Jalik was last seen at a home belonging to his adoptive father's parents in the 10 block of Hill Street in Greenwich, New York on November 1, 2007. His adoptive father, Stephen Burrell Kerr, spent the night alone in the house with him. Jalik disappeared during the night and has never been heard from again. Kerr says he woke up in the morning and at 7.30 a.m. found a note Jalik left behind. It read, quote, Dear everybody, I'm sorry for everything. I won't be a bother anymore. Goodbye, Jalik. Unquote. Kerr reported his son missing at 8.57 a.m. He is not believed to have been carrying any cash or credit cards when he went missing. Jalik had been living with his adoptive parents, Kerr, and his wife, Jocelyn A. McDonald, for five years by 2007. He was born addicted to crack cocaine and spent his early childhood in six different foster homes. His parents stated Jalik had violent temper tantrums and his four siblings were afraid of him. Jalik's former foster parents, Jody and Larry Schoen, who cared for him for four years, confirmed this, stating his outburst could last up to an hour. They described Jalik as a very intelligent but very troubled child. The Schoens had originally planned to adopt him, but after he attacked their daughter when he was seven, they decided he could no longer stay in their home. He then went to live with Kerr and McDonald, who have three biological sons and one adopted daughter. The couple's children ranged in age from 8 to 14 at the time of Jalik's disappearance. Jalik's adoptive family led a non-traditional lifestyle at the time of his disappearance. Their home in rural Washington County, New York, had no running water. The toilets are outhouses. Its only electricity comes from a generator that runs for several hours during the day and everyone slept in one room. The family stated they lived this way because it was better for the environment. Jalik's family still owns the home, but in 2008, they moved to West Rupert, Vermont. Kerr McDonald stated Jalik had thoughts of taking his own life, and he was also homicidal at the time of his disappearance, but he wasn't taking any psychiatric drugs or receiving any therapy for his mental conditions. On October 23rd, a little over a week prior to Jalik's disappearance, Kerr called a crisis hotline and said his son was unmanageable. Kerr stated Jalik had threatened a small child in his homeschool group, and McDonald was afraid of him and no longer wanted him at home. Kerr said he and his wife wanted to reverse the adoption. The crisis worker said it was not possible to reverse the adoption and suggested respite care instead. Jalik was sent to the home of Elaine and Tom Person, licensed foster parents who had provided respite care for him in the past. They kept him until November 1st, then gave him back to Kerr, who planned to send him to another respite home the next day. That was the day Jalik was reported missing. An extensive search of the area turned up no indication of Jalik's whereabouts. Within a few days, police announced they thought he could have met with foul play, since it is unlikely that a child that of that age could survive on his own. The possibilities that Jalik ran away or took his own life have not been ruled out, however. McDonald took a polygraph in this case, but Kerr refused to take one. Both parents maintained their innocence in this case and stated they believed their son simply ran away. They suggested he might be living with an African-American family or a gang, as Jalik had always considered himself black rather than biracial and had wanted to live with other African-Americans. The person said the farewell note Jalik supposedly left on the night he vanished was not a goodbye note, but rather a letter he was assigned to write by his father for homework. Kerr allegedly told his son to write a note apologizing to the people he had harmed, and Tom saw him writing it, although he didn't actually read it. Elaine and Tom believe this is the note found after Jalik vanished. 
Elaine, several of Jalik's former foster parents and his adoptive maternal grandparents have started a website publicizing Jalik's disappearance. Elaine wrote she believed Kerr harmed Jalik on the day he went missing and caused his disappearance. In January 2008, police named Kerr as a person of interest in Jalik's disappearance. They stated they had video surveillance camera footage of Kerr driving his van around Greenwick after midnight on the, on the night of Jalik's disappearance at a time Kerr says he was asleep. Cell phone records also indicate Kerr took a different route to the house than he had said. Investigators appealed for information on Kerr's whereabouts on November 1st and November 2nd. In February 2008, police conducted a search warrant on Kerr's father's home where Jalik was staying when he disappeared. They seized a computer to try to determine if the machine was used to write the alleged goodbye letter, but couldn't prove or disprove the theory. Days after the search, Kerr and McDonald filed a lawsuit against the police department, alleging they had been illegally detained and the search was improper. Jalik's adoptive maternal grandmother, Barbara Reilly, has been active in the search for him and filed for custody of him after his disappearance, but was denied. In July 2008, she was charged with burglarizing Kerr and McDonald's home. Reilly ple has pleaded not guilty. Shortly after the burglary, police went to the home and removed a, police, a piece of clothing for testing. They stated Riley had seen the clothing while she was inside in a media interview. Riley said it was the yellow fleece shirt Jalik was said to have been wearing when he disappeared. In a media interview, Riley stated Kerr had anger management issues and had been going to counseling for them and that McDonald had made him move out of the family home for a brief period twice in 2007 because of his aggressive behavior towards the children. Really said she witnessed one incident where Kerr became angry with Jalik, dragged him outside, and repeatedly dunked him in a nearby creek. She said McDonald made Kerr write a letter of apology to Jalik for this and made him do the child's chores for a month. Jalik may be in the New York cities of Albany or Altamont. Authorities stated they have little evidence as to his fate, and no one has been charged in connection with his case, but foul play is suspected in his disappearance. If you have any information, please call the Greenwood Village Police Department at 518-692-9332.